Good morning on Friday the 17th of September and our opening prayer. God of the living word, open our ears to your message. Open our eyes to see your wonders. Open our hearts to experience your love and open our minds to your wisdom today and every day. Amen. Our readings today are from the first letter to Timothy, chapter 6, verses 2b to 12. Just letting a noisy car pass there. And Psalm 49, verses 1 to, 1 to 9. I wonder how good we are at listening to something accurately. One of my previous churches operated a prayer chain system. That's when an urgent prayer request is passed down the line of people who have all agreed to pray when an urgent matter crops up. However, there was always a concern as to whether the people towards the end of the chain prayed for the right thing, or did some of the message get lost as it was passed on or even altered. The most classic occasion was when someone's mother was taken unexpectedly ill. By the time the message reached the end of the chain, it was being passed on that that person's father had died. Imagine the surprise of the couple's son when he began to receive sympathy cards. I'm talking about the ability to accurately relay information because today's reading from Timothy contains one of the most misquoted verses in the whole of the Bible. Money isn't the root of all evil. That's a misquote. It's the love of money which is the problem. Money, when used wisely, can do a great deal of good. Over the years, there have been many extremely wealthy people who spent a considerable amount of their fortune for the greater good of others. But the problem really arises when money becomes the main focus of someone's life to the exclusion of other things. Effectively, the accumulation of money becomes an obsession. Money becomes an object of worship. When this happens, it becomes a false god because the time and focus spent on money means that there is no time and space in that person's life for God and quite possibly no time either for other people. How unhealthy is that? And how contrary to everything that Jesus taught and stood for. We now come to the community prayer. Loving Lord, we thank you that you are already everywhere. We pray for the areas of Mill Hill, Gallow Greaves, Bank Top and Whitton. We think of everyone who lives in them all who work there and those who pass through these areas in their daily lives. We ask that you give us the eyes to see your vision for these places. Amen. And today I've got four prayer points, all of which pick up with the main message. Our first prayer point is that we as Christians use the money which we have in a wise manner. Our second prayer point is to pray for people who are struggling with debt and then to give thanks for the work of Christians Against Poverty. And I think that it's important that we pray for people who are still on the furlough scheme, who are anxious about what will happen when that scheme ends in the near future. I come to the Lord's Prayer for today. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not to a time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Jason and Barbara send their blessings to all of you and hope that you and your families are keeping well. And our blessing for today. May God's light guide you, God's hand support you, and God's love surround you. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and evermore.